Hello, I'm David Heim, the SketchUp guy. I've made this video to help you get started using this terrific 3D design program. SketchUp's a wonderful tool for woodworkers. It's easy to use, but there are a few bumps in the learning curve, so let's smooth them out. When you go to SketchUp.com, you'll find several versions of the program. Go to sketchup.com forward slash download forward slash all to get the right version. The one I recommend is called SketchUp Make 2017. It's free. It comes with a 30-day trial of SketchUp Pro, the version you use for business. There are also two versions up in the cloud, SketchUp Free and SketchUp Shop. Frankly, I don't like either one of them. For one thing, you can't use them to print measured drawings. So for us woodworkers, that's a deal breaker. The first thing you want to do after you download SketchUp is set up your workspace. You'll see a screen like this when you open the program. Yeah, it says SketchUp Pro, but that's because of the 30-day trial. Click on Choose Template. SketchUp comes with several templates designed for different uses like architecture or urban planning. There's one called Woodworking Inches. Choose it. Of course you can use it as is, but I recommend making a few changes. Here's what to do. In the Window tab, go to the Styles menu, click on the Edit button, then click the thumbnail on the left. Change the number in the box next to Profiles from a 2 to a 1. This will give you a nice, thin, uniform line in your models. Now click on the middle thumbnail. Click in the box next to the word Background. Use the RGB sliders to make the background plain white. While you're here, make sure there's no check in the boxes next to Sky and Ground. Okay, you can close the Styles window, go back to the Window tab, and open Model Info. Choose Units from the list on the left, set the units for Fractional, and the Precision at 1 16th. That's a reasonable amount of accuracy for placing parts next to one another. You can always specify a smaller fraction if you want, but 16th is the smallest that will show on the screen. You're almost ready. Go to the File tab and choose Save as Template. Be give your template a name. Be sure there, there is a check in the box says Set as Default Template. Click Save, and you're done. It's time to take SketchUp for a test drive. This will help you learn what the tools do and how to do important basic things. SketchUp has a full array of tools, and most of them work like their real-life counterparts. The one that looks like a pencil draws straight lines. The one that looks like a circle draws circles. You get the idea. The tool you'll probably use the most is the tape measure. It works like a combination square, marking gauge, ruler, and tape. Use it to place dotted guidelines so you know where to position parts, cut, drill, and chop. It's pretty much the way you use real measuring and marking tools in the shop. You can draw over those guidelines to make shapes, the outline of boards. And you can use the guidelines to help you line up different parts. Learn to use the tools along with the measurements box in the lower corner of the screen. Let me use the line tool to show you what to do.
click where you want the line to start. Drag the cursor to begin drawing the line. Now, type the length you want. Notice that the label for the box changes to the word length, and the number you typed appears in the box. Press Enter, and SketchUp will make the line the correct length. This works for the radius of circles. It works for the bulge in an arc. And so on. If you draw a rectangle, the measurements box gives you the length and width separated by commas. Take some time to practice with the drawing and modeling tools. I'm going to draw a quick rectangle here. And let's see, let's make it 24 inches long and 9 inches wide. I can use the zoom tool to get in close. And I'll use push-pull to make it the right thickness. Just type in 3 fourths. Now I can use the circle tool to outline a hole in the board and push-pull to cut the hole. I'll orbit around to make sure it came through the back. Lay down some guidelines for a uh, dado. Again, I'm typing in the values I want. I'll just trace over these guidelines. And I use push-pull again to make the dado the right depth. In this case, 3 eighths. That's what I type. And I can do the same thing over here. I'll put in a rabbit. Just outline the shape I want and then use push-pull. It works like a router, it works like a chisel, it works like a drill, and it also gives shapes the third dimension. Finally, I'm going to use push-pull again. Put a little chamfer on this end of the board. Now that's what you want to do. Just create a board and use it as a practice to get familiar with SketchUp's tools. Learn to use the arrow keys on your keyboard to keep the shapes you draw and move aligned with the SketchUp axes. The right arrow keeps things parallel to the red axis. The left arrow keeps things parallel to the green axis. And the up arrow keeps things aligned with the blue axis. It's a good idea to get in the habit of tapping one of the arrow keys as soon as you begin to draw a line or place a guideline. Finally, practice, practice, practice. Practice doesn't make perfect, but it does make for good models.